Hello and welcome back. Um, we have a visitor to the video cast who I'd like to introduce to you. Uh, welcome, Deborah Kieser, Director of TCAV. Thank you very much for, uh, for joining us. We thought it would be a bit weird if as one of the composers I stopped at this point and asked myself some questions. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Steph. Thanks for having me. Lovely to see you. Strange to Lovely see you. To see. Both locked down in rural Mid Wales. You're about 15 miles away, but feels like you're the other side of the earth. Um, yes, it's very strange, isn't it? <laughs> it's very odd. And normally, of course, we'd be together at the Vale of Camorgan Festival this, well, yeah, this week, next week. Uh, yes. Very sad not to be there, but great to be touching base with you and, and hearing some of the composers' music this week. So, yes. The tables have turned and I will interview you. Um, it's really, it's going to be a treat to hear Dreamtides again. I know that Dreamtides was written 20 years ago in 2000, um, but it's had something of a renaissance actually through the Vale of Morgan Festival, hasn't it? It has indeed. Um, yes, it was, it was written at a sort of quite a transitional time in my life and it was a piece about that transition in a way. Um, and it's just absolutely lovely that it, it's been given that second life. And it was played at the festival, I think, two years ago. In fact, um, um, by um, uh, Matthew Jones and Annabel Thwaite, uh, who you're going to hear, who are playing it wonderfully from their living room um, for us now. But um, yeah, it's, it's a piece that, it, that I, I'm very, very fond of it. It was first played at the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama and thanks to Peter Reynolds and I very much hold him in loving memory um, with regards to that piece. It's dedicated to him and it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's great that it's been, it, being done because um, actually this year at the festival it was a different piece that was due to be played. Yes, your it piano was, trio, yes. Uh, yeah, and Dante which um, I, I, I was really thrilled that it had been shortlisted um, me alongside five other Welsh composers. It had been shortlisted for entry to the ISCM this year and it wasn't chosen by the ISCM, it was Mark, uh, Mark Bowden's absolutely wonderful five memos so they, 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 uh, they did good <laughs> but it was just lovely that the Vale of Glamorgan Festival were going to give it a, give it a showcase this year but we've got dream tides it's much easier to you know pull together um, at, at, at very short notice for this recording so that's lovely I was lucky enough to hear it again last year at uh, the Fishguard Festival actually because Matt and Annabelle played it there as well it's an incredibly beautiful piece it's um, deceptively um, deceptively uh, slow I suppose and contemplative it's actually quite a difficult piece Yes, it's one of those pieces, uh, like much of my music, which on paper looks incredibly simple, but when you come to perform it, you think, oh, actually, this is quite difficult to play, because um, uh, it, I suppose this, it's, it, it, it's quite subtle, and there are lots of very um, tiny, tiny changes in it. The piece, it's in three sections. The, the first and third sections are very, very slow, and that, that's slightly faster in the middle. But, but the idea is that the violin and piano for whom it's written, I, sh I should have said that, it's a violin and piano piece. Um, they never quite meet, they're, they're together the whole time, but it's almost as if they're sort of overlapping. They overlap rhythmically and the rhythm is, is, is basically twos against threes the whole time. So although it feels like a sort of continuous movement, it's actually pretty lopsided. So there's a sense of sort of waves. I, con I conceived it as being, you know, that kind of state that you're in, in a dream where everything's are sort of half real, but not quite real. And you start to surface out of the dream and you don't quite, and then you go back into it. And then you think, you know, things are real again, and that, but, but they never quite settle. It's that sort of a feeling. And it's very sort of ambiguous in mood as well. So you can't put your finger on whether it's, you, you know, whether it's uplifting or whether it's kind of bittersweet or what's going on in it. It's very, from that point of view, it's difficult to pin down. That's a great description because bittersweet is something I was going to say when I was dithering. I thought, oh, what is it? So, yeah, great. Well, look, thank you, Steph. Um, uh, fantastic to see you. <laughs> and uh, let's hear Dream Tides. Thank you.